Let me start by asking you the following question. Who are you? Yes, and I'm in, I know that you're aware of your name. But what do you tell people when you meet them? Do you tell them your resume? Do you tell them something personal? What do you share? In my work, I experience that three out of four people don't have a clue of who they are. And I can almost see you thinking, right? I'm not one of those three. Well, maybe you know me through sports, a judoka, a fighting machine, totally not being myself. Or maybe you know me through Expedition Robinson, running around in a bikini, totally not being myself. Or maybe some of you know me through my work. I guide people, living my passion, being myself. My goal is that in the end of this talk, you know what kind of questions you need to ask yourself to become closer to your true self. But first, I want to take you on my journey. How did I become that fighting machine? How did I lose the real me? Well, I grew up in Den Helder. Does anybody know what kind of town Den Helder is? Except it's the end of the world, right? <laughs> yes. Well, Den Helder is a small navy town where there's lots of wind and a boat to catch. I grew up with a father being a navy officer. My father was away most of the time in the first 10 years of my life. And when my father was at home, he didn't do well with emotions. So what happened when I was a little girl and I started to cry? He always looked at me and he was like, what are you doing? Why are you crying? How does that help you? Plus the solution for the problem I was having at that time. And as a child, you would do anything for love. And you want to make your parents happy. So what did I do as a little girl? I looked up to my father and I was like, okay, I'm going to be perfect. I'm going to be strong. That's what I started doing in every aspect of my life. In school, but also in the sport that I practiced, which was judo. And what started off as playfully learning how to do judo, soon became a quest in being the best. It was all about winning and losing. Well, not so much the losing part, because I really hated losing. And when I lost, I got really grumpy. At age 16, I qualified for the world championships in the junior division. And I remember it all too well before I left to Portugal. My parents said to me, well, just enjoy the ride and have fun. Fun? Fun? I'm not there to have fun, I'm there to collect the gold. And so I did. And when I came home, I told my mother, this is what I want to do when I grow up. I want to be the best in the world in judo. At age 19, I qualified for my first Olympic Games in Sydney. Didn't get a medal over there, which to me was like a complete failure. But hey, I worked harder and harder. And four years later, Olympic Games in Athens. I made it to the final. I was ahead. And there were two minutes left on the clock. Then there was a stop in the fight. I walked back to my place. My heart was pounding, and I thought in a split second, if I keep this up, I could write history. I could be Olympic champion. And the moment I walked up to my Japanese opponent, she threw me for a rip and bam, there I was. I lost, and my world collapsed. I didn't want to think about it. I just kept on working harder and harder. And the year after, I became world champion. World champion! Was <laughs> but was I happy? No, I wasn't happy. I was relieved that I finally lived up to my own expectations, or at least a little bit. At age 28, I got stuck. If you looked at me on the outside, I had the perfect life. I mean, I had Olympic medal, I was world champion, I had a handsome boyfriend, we had a big house, I had a bachelor degree, and sweet family and friends. And I was unhappy. But what do you do as a perfectionist? 
I would never tell anyone. I mean, that would be a complete failure. So I walked around ashamed, and I kept on working my ass off to be perfect. At age 30, my family and friends decided to throw me a party. It was a dress-up party. I looked like a princess with a tiara. And the limousine took me to the party. I was there, and the moment I walked in, I saw all my friends and family. They were chatting, they were having fun, some of them were dancing. And I just had the feeling that I walked into my worst nightmare. I immediately started drinking. <laughs> and as an athlete, my alcohol tolerance was like zero. Yeah. So I got drunk really, really fast. And what do they say about drunk people? Yes, they start telling the truth, right? Yes, so I did. My boyfriend took me to some kind of sweet with champagne. I walked in, I didn't even see it. And at one point he looked at me and he said, what's going on? I don't recognize you anymore. And what did I do when somebody questioned me? I always started fighting. That's what I knew. So we argued and we quarreled, and then his words hit me. He said, "Now I have the feeling you don't love me anymore. That was the moment that I couldn't say anything. I just started to cry. I looked at him and I said, I don't know. I don't feel it. And I don't feel it with you. I don't feel it in every aspect of my life. The next day, I told my sister. She got really angry. And she said to me, if you're still not happy and you have all these things, it's time that you take a good look in the mirror. This is not the rest of the world. It's you. People, it was the day that I found out that I wasn't perfect. In fact, I wasn't myself at all. But who was I? I really didn't know. The only thing I knew is there needed to be a change. So I did what I found most difficult to do. I asked somebody to help me. I found a person who didn't know me, my world, and was able to guide me. The funny thing is, I had the first meeting with my life coach, and I just told him my story, and I looked at him, and I said, give me some solutions. Like, give me the Stephen Covey book, the seven rules, a goal to achieve, and then, ta-da, I would be happy. But it was completely different. There were no shortcuts. The day I found out, that becoming yourself is a life process, and that there is no goal to achieve, just to live through your process, it made me cry. It was a slow and at times really hard process. Becoming aware of my behavior, what I was doing all the time, which made me aware of my patterns. And you must know, you develop your behavior and your patterns in the first 10 years of your life. So you form yourself in the family you grow up. Remember I told you about Den Helder and about my father? So you can imagine that I developed behavior and patterns to stop crying and having emotions. And it's a, quite a journey to take a deep look inside yourself. I found things about myself that I really didn't like but they're also part of me. I know that everyone has things they don't like about themselves. But the key to success is to accept that there are certain things you can't change. And the most important is, don't resist it. Don't fight it or ignore it. The only thing it wants is attention. And it's that feeling that is telling you something. So, what did I discover? Well, I discovered that I'm a Sweet, sensitive, really soft woman. Yes. 
And that I'm perfect the way that I am with all my imperfections. And it's an open door, but there is a huge difference in saying that you are okay with your imperfections or really feel that you are okay with it. And because I know better now who I am, it's easier to make decisions and stay true to myself. And if you know who you are, you don't have to live up to somebody's expectations or your vision of their expectations. And what I already said, life, discovering yourself is a life process. So you will keep on discovering things you don't know about yourself. Two years later, I was at my parents' house. I was in the kitchen. I was crying because I was sad. My father walked into the kitchen. What are you doing? Why are you crying? And I looked at him and said, yeah, I'm crying because I'm sad. How does that help you? And then I said, or he said something that made me really proud. He said, you know I'm not good at this stuff. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, Dad, it's okay. You don't have to do anything with it. These are my emotions. I'm sad and I think I'm allowed to cry with my parents. And then he said, okay, okay, just stay here, I will get your mom. <laughs> he walked away and I laughed. Yes. Well, so, if people ask me what I'm most proud of, it's not the medals. It's that I became aware of who I am. Yes. And I invite you to take a deep look at yourself. Look in the mirror. Feel what you're feeling, because your feeling is telling you something. And do you take yourself seriously? Ask yourself questions. What is my story? Who am I? And what do I want? Ask these questions over, over, and over again. Thank you.